It would be most reassuring for many of you to assume that demons don't have hearts. We all started out as humans, and can't wipe away every trace of good within ourselves just for your convenience. I am genuinely sorry. But in reality, we demons do have feelings, thoughts, and dreams. We're also proud to learn them.
Mr. Arwell was a good man to take me as an apprentice, and a good baker, too. It was a nice job, much better than life at the orphanage. I'm so sorry he had to fire me and all. I understand why, but I wasn't stealing. I just couldn't resist the pastry. This adorable little girl is the sole survivor of a terrible tragedy that happened on an isolated North Dakota farm, completely cut off from the rest of the world by the heavy snow. A family has starved to death this winter. This terrible story should remind us that even in 1914, people are subjected to hunger and live in precarious conditions. America will be a great nation only when these unacceptable disparities will cease to be. The little girl has been taken into the care of the Bismarck Orphanage. you come so often. It's the first time I've had a real friend, someone who cares about me. The people in the park, they're nice too, especially Kalinka and Todd and Theo. But with you, it's different. We have fun. You tell me those old stories and, and you're there, for real. You know, sweetie, I do have certain powers. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, you know, it's not easy. I'm so different from everyone, and it's so hard for me just to move my body. And even with you coming to see me, well, I'm lonely, and I miss my... Your parents. You would like to be with your parents. Yes, but there's a problem with that. If I get there on my own, without God calling me and all, well, I, I heard God didn't like that, and he won't let me in. You know, Angel, the boss is less formalist than you think. He knows you're kind. And even that pig-headed Peter will be ready to throw open his pearly gates for you. Still, I don't think you should do that. Welcome again, folks. This is Mef, with you, right through those dark savannah nights here on Devil FM 666. Our next call comes from young Giselle. She's an artist in a famous amusement park. Giselle, nice to have you on the show again. Hi, Mef. I needed someone to talk to. That's why I'm here, Giselle. A voice in the loneliness. Tell me what's wrong. Well, I told you I'm fat and all, and people... They stare at me. That's all right. It's part of my job. It's that most of them laugh at me. I understand. 
because I do all those tricks and make faces, pretending I'm clumsy and all. And it's good they laugh, and I like it when they clap at the end, but some, well, they look like I make them so sad. It makes me feel so cold. Oh, girl, you are so right. Some people are sad, and the world is turning cold. Keep a smile on your face, kid. You're not the only one to feel alone and frightened sometimes. Understand. It was not really stealing. I happen to know that baker, Mr. Arrowell. We talked about you. He forgave you. He did? Yeah? You know, you were my only friend, and I was wondering, do you think maybe you could come over to the park, I mean, and that we could meet and talk and... Oh, that would be wonderful. I, uh, can't, darling. It's, well, basically against the rules. Okay. Uh, it's all right. Damn it. I've never cared much about the rules anyway. Okay, sweetie. See you soon. As I told you, I do have certain powers. Still, for complicated reasons, I cannot fulfill your desire. You first have to grow up a little bit. It doesn't mean becoming a boring person, but it does imply some sacrifices. You're well aware that your heart cannot bear the burden of weight indefinitely. You will see your parents soon enough. You told me that waiting was the painful part. I left a little clock for you kind of magical. There is a date on it. Well, it's your departure time, Angel. I leave you another gift, a very special spoon. It's a magic wand which will bring you all those cakes and sweets you are so keen on. This food won't hurt you. I suggest that you make good use of the time you have left to do something that will make you feel proud of yourself when you meet your parents again. It's life's most important secret, Mom. To find things to do that will make me proud. I won't be able to come and see you before this date, but we'll meet again. That's a promise from the big man himself. Keep smiling, kid. You know you cannot do that, Mephistopheles. Don't lecture me on what I can or cannot do, Angelito. I love that kid, and I will do whatever pleases me to help her feel better. It's against the rules, Mephistopheles. Here, only I am entitled to know what is good or not for these people. We each have our roles to play, demon. You tempt and reveal. I comfort and soothe. 
And in what way did you soothe her, Angelito? This has nothing to do with you. You have no right to don Heaven's robes whenever the mood takes you. Right. Right. Is that what is at stake here? The celestial golden rules against the well-being of that child. Well, damn me, if that's not a crisis of conscience. Oh, I wouldn't like to be in your pair of wings. Now you remember. You let me help her, and they punished you for that by sending you back here. Courage, my friend. I see an end to your troubles, and it's just a few steps away. Same dream. I go to heaven, and there they are. I say, Dad, Mom, I've missed you so much. won't hurt. <laughs> you liar. Of course it hurts, but it's okay. It's worth it. Hordes of people are queuing to see the mysterious painting donated anonymously to the Chicago Museum of Arts. 
Experts and critics are still at loggerheads as to the origins of the unprecedented material which serves as the canvas. This puzzle is unlikely to be solved since the donation was conditional on the painting never being removed from its protective glass. What appears to be the portrait of ancient Akkadian goddess Ishtar has managed to confuse critics and art lovers alike. One thing is sure, it is a masterpiece that has won over the entire art world and become one of the city museum's most valuable exhibits. You did it, kid. You did it. Throughout the process, I had one fear. How would I be able to preserve the skin once the painting was finished? She had chosen the picture herself. How did that illiterate kid come to know about the Sumerian goddess of love? She would never tell me, and somehow I prefer it that way. The puzzle itself was less difficult than I had expected. Of course, there was one thing I didn't dare to think about. I kept my mind focused on painting the picture and tried to forget about how I was going to get the canvas. Ishtar is clothed with pleasure and love. She is laden with vitality, charm and voluptuousness. In lips she is sweet. Life is in her mouth. At her appearance, rejoicing becomes full. Who to her greatness can be equal? Strong, exalted, splendid are her decrees. Ishtar is sought after among the gods. Extraordinary is her station. Respected is her word. It is supreme over them. So you finally remember. When you were in the park, as an angel I mean, I never saw you, but I sometimes sensed you. Now, oh, I think we've arrived. He who has committed a fault shall be given the chance to make amends if the fault was soon be given the chance to get your wings back, my friend.
spectators are kindly asked to go back to their seats. Could uh, someone tell me what game we're playing here? I guess it's not the game of Souls forecast. Souls? You know as well as I do that Souls are beyond our jurisdiction. What then, Theodore? Can you enlighten me? You know I made a pact. I wanted the park to be a success. I still believe that this place has much to offer to the world. It's getting cold out there. And for that, you sold your soul. No, the price was somewhat higher than that. Higher? Theodore has agreed to replace me. Is this another of your tricks, demon? Not at all. Three thousand years spent in the company of men is a hell of a long time. I want to change. Change? For what? I don't know better than any dying mortal. Afterlife secrets belong to the Almighty Force. You should know that. What do I have to do with that? Why did he agree to send me back here to be a part of your battle? Because of the clause for the pact to be valid. Theodore has to be replaced too. The park needs a new director. Someone with in-depth knowledge of the human heart. Someone like you. And he thought that I could be that person because I had broken his rules and therefore could never be allowed into the Silver City again. What choice do I have? Firstly, he offers you the possibility to become mortal again. Secondly, ah, here he comes. Who? Mr. Faust, I presume? I'm Henry Porter from Howard & Howard, representing Blue Day Entertainment Corp. Nice to meet you. I am Faust, but I doubt that I am the person you're looking for. If you are Marcellus Faust, then I can't see any reason why not. You are the sole proprietor, according to the will of the late Theodore Moore, of this place, the land on which it's built, and everything it contains. Our client doesn't wish to discuss the legitimacy of this act, just to make you a richer man by advantageously buying it back from you. What in the hell? Here is your choice, Forst. On one point, I didn't lie. The boss did name you his referee in this affair. If I may, sir, don't hesitate. Think not only of the wealth it will bring you, but to the well-being of all the people who will see this obsolete mess transform into a modern and safe amusement park. No more stupid accidents, just fair entertainment for the masses. Nothingness. Freedom. Modernity. I am sorry, sir, but I intend to reopen this park, just like it used to be. Yes! Sir, I really think you should re- Out of this place, now! Having been an angel for a while didn't make it any easier to become a man again. The choice was easy enough, though. Something had urged me from inside, that little voice you hear sometimes inside your head. Some say it's the voice of a guardian angel. <laughs> I should know about that. But lots of things are fading away, and new things are coming to life. Thus, I became the new owner and director of Dreamland. A daunting task. What was ahead of me was no less full of surprises than what I had already been through. But as they say, that's another story. Well, what are you staring at, Cherub? Let's I go to I told work. you not to call me Cherub, right? Why not? I mean, you are rather small. You've got the wings, and what a chubby little cherub bot. Someday, I'm going to break that damn bottle of yours. I swear I will. Stop. Stop.
tired of fighting. 